Let's continue our introduction to Solaris and Karma by starting to look more at materials. So I'm going to go over materials in this, but I'm going to not focus so much on the materials that I'm actually going to be putting onto these balls and everything, just because they're really simple and I want to focus more on the image textures and how we can use those inside of Karma, because there's a lot of different nodes with that, and that's really what you're going to be using most often. So let's go ahead and take a look at our material library here. And I have all of our nodes already set up in here. So our sub networks, they're just, if you right click and type Karma Material Builder, that's all they are. I've placed one of those down and I've just added the properties in here. So they're all the same thing, just with slightly different surface nodes. So for the, the white one, I've just set the roughness up here to 0.686. The shiny one, we've just dropped that down to 0.255. And then the gray one, I've set to this color right here. So just to kind of a, kind of a grayish with a little bit of a bluish tint to it. And then change the roughness on that as well. And then our bronze is not actually a bronze. Uh, I've just set it to kind of a bronzish-ish type color. And then make sure the metalness is one if you want a metal material. Uh, you can set that to one and you'll get some a, a metal material. Well, let's go ahead and drop down a Karma Material Builder and let's start to take a look at some of the nodes that go along with image textures. So like I said, that's really what you're going to be using most often inside of Houdini. Uh, you'll probably use just a standard surface here and there, but for the most part, you're going to probably want to use textures. So if I right click and start to type in textures, we have not like a texture node to import a texture. We have texture coordinates. We've got this PBR texture, sh texture set, which we'll go over in a minute. And then we also have this hex tile texture. Let's just go ahead and place that down for the moment. And this is a really useful node that is Houdini specific. And it is a way to basically break up tiling inside of Houdini. It just does it automatically for you. So let's go ahead and paste in a image there, a texture image, and I'm just using uh, one from Grayscale Gorilla. You can use kind of whatever you want, but that's what I'm using for this. So I'm going to pipe that into our base color, and let's jump back out to our material linker, and let's just go ahead and assign that. So we'll, right, or we'll click in there and assign this to our background. So now if we fire up our render, you can see that we have this texture going on in the background. And we can dive back into our material network here and we can play around with these values. So if I wanted to set this to a larger value, we can, we can turn off our random rotation and it's basically just going to be a tiled image texture or we can crank that up and we can change the random scale if we want. And we can get some different looks here and play around with the seed. You can do all sorts of things with this node to try and break up the tiling. Obviously you're going to, Need to find what makes the best look for your specific texture. So you'll use you can use that. Uh, it's very useful for for some different things. So use that as you see fit. But to actually use like a normal image texture, we have the Material X image nodes. So we can either use an image or a tiled image. I'd say just go ahead and use the tiled image for pretty much everything because it's the, basically the same as the image, except for it gives you the ability to actually tile your image uh, really easily inside this node itself. So let's go ahead and paste in that, that same texture and we'll pipe, pipe that into our base color there. And you see, we get the same thing as we had with the uh, hex tile texture, except for when we had it with no random rotation. So we can take this and we can change this UV tiling you can see that if you up it too much, you get a really odd value. But you see there, we get some tiling going on. Um, you can, if you want to lower the tiling, we can go back down. And we can get some increase in our texture size there if you'd like. But you also have a couple of nodes that go with this. So we can place down an image place or Material X Place 2D. And this gives us some separate controls. It gives us, I guess, kind of the same control in the scale, but it also gives us a control with 
um, our rotation and our offset. So if we pipe that into our texture coordinate, you can see that it kind of breaks everything. That's because we need a Material X uh, texture coordinate node. We can wire that into our texture coordinates and now we have everything back to normal. So with this, as I said, we can affect the scale. So I can increase this and we get a bigger scale on our, on our image. We can rotate this, so pay attention to the way that these lines are going. If I just rotate this 90 degrees, you can see we get some rotation going on there. We can also offset this, so if I want to offset this maybe in the X direction, you know, we can move things over. If I move them over in partials, or sorry, the Y direction, um, and this would be the, the X. So we can move these partially over, and just kind of move them around using this Material X Place 2D. Now we also have a triplanar node that we can use, triplanar projection, paste our color in there, and then wire that into our base color. And it is going to need uh, X and Y and Z. So this is, basically how the material X or yeah, the triplanar projection is. Um, it doesn't have the option for your material X place 2D because uh, it is placing it right inside of uh, the triplanar inside of world space. So just be aware of that. We can play with the, the blend values if you want. It's not gonna show very well on this specific model. It would show better on the, the spheres, but we can use that in order to actually get a, a triplanar projection going on inside of uh, inside of Karma, which is super nice. And then the last thing that I wanna show you is going to be actually that PBR texture set. So if we drop down that Material X PBR texture set, this is a new node. I think this one actually is Houdini 20 new. And it is going to be like a super powered image node. So if I just move some stuff out of the way here. I go ahead and click on this. We have basically a bunch of, of image nodes just layered on top of each other, all inside of one node. So we have a bunch of different images that we can then just wire all the outputs out directly into our standard surface. So let's just place in our base color here. We have our projection type as triplanar or UV in here. So we can do a UV or our triplanar projection directly inside of this, which makes it really nice because if you use the triplanar projections here, you have to use a separate node for each individual layer. So your, your base color, your roughness, um, everything like that, you'd have to have a specific triplanar node. So everything lines up and you'd have to, you know, make copies of them and or references of them and then just change out the files. That way everything lines up perfectly. But with this Material X uh, PBR texture set, we have everything all in one node, which is super nice. And we have some default values in here, so you can actually control basically everything inside of this as well. We even have our bump, you can use height maps or set this to a normal if you want. It's a very, very useful node that I would recommend that you get used to using if you're inside Houdini uh, 20, because it will make everything just a little bit easier for you. You don't have to place down a bunch of different nodes. And you can still, you know, wire in strings into these to, to file the, the pass and everything like that. So you still have a bunch of inputs if you don't want to put them directly in here. And then also we have the texture coordinates for this as well. So we can wire in our place 2D texture and we still have the ability to move everything around. And we can move everything around with just one place node going directly into one PBR texture set. And we don't have to worry about wiring in a, a million different things. So super, super nice to have this node. I'm really glad that they, they wired this in for us, um, but it is a Houdini specific thing. So if you're trying to build a Material X, um, you know, networks to transfer between different, different softwares, this will not work to to do that so just be aware of that um, but the anything that's just a, a material x node you can uh, if we look inside here we have material x and then we have this little houdini 
section and every node inside of here is Houdini specific. So just be aware that anything that you use from this is going to not transfer over to other software if you're trying to do that. Everything else that's inside the Material X um, library should. So if you you know try to try to build stuff for other software, it's just make sure double check that you're not using any Houdini specific nodes. But anyways, that is all for this video. We'll continue on. We're starting to wrap up uh, this series. We shouldn't, we don't have a whole lot left to, to cover, just uh, maybe some render settings and some camera stuff. So we'll cover that here in the coming video or videos and uh, we'll kind of wrap this up. So thank you guys for watching and have a good day.